What's up ladies and gentle tubers, welcome to the Everride channel. My name is Tyler, and whether you're a fan of middleweight 650 adventure motorcycles, or you're interested in buying one for yourself, I hope you enjoy this video enough to hit that subscribe button for more. We've got river crossings, jumps, a drag race, and tons of information comparing two of the best selling, highest rated, rock solid, reliable, budget friendly, most loved adventure motorcycles in the world, the Kawasaki KLR650 and the Suzuki V-Strom DL650. Stick around and enjoy. So first a little background information on myself, because as a reviewer you need to know where I'm coming from, and my biases and preference, and my riding style and experience. I started adventure motorcycling just four years ago. While some would argue that with only four years under my belt I'm inexperienced, but the newness of riding makes it easy to teach and relate to other new adventurers. My videos are created for the purpose of helping people like you and me get out, enjoy life, and find adventure on a budget. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will get back to you. I currently own and ride an expertly tuned DRZ400E and an old, beat up, trusty KLR650. I occasionally dabble on other people's motorcycles when they're brave enough to let me. Well, four years ago, like so many new adventure riders, as soon as I saw Long Way Around, I knew I wanted fully loaded BMW R1200 GS. And as soon as I saw the price tag, I knew I wanted a Suzuki DL1000 V-Strom. And once I heard that the V-Strom 650 was just as fun for less money, I wanted that. However, once reality struck and I needed something even more affordable, I chose the Kawasaki KLR650. Now if you follow my channel, you already know that despite its shortcomings, I love the KLR650. But as much as I love it, I always wondered how it would compare with what was initially my first choice, the DL650. So when I chose the KLR over the V-Strom four years ago, did I make the right choice? Well, this week my friend Matt came up and had no qualms about beating on his V-Strom or letting me do the same. The day brought whoops, jumps, river crossings, a drag race, and general shenanigans aplenty, all in the name of testing these bikes' capabilities both on and off the road. One thing that I love about these motorcycles is that you can beat the crap out of them and never sweat over a few scratches. Riders know that a floundered Strom or KLR are more likely to be photographed and laughed over with a few high fives than lamented with a looming service bill. And that's the first in a long list of pros for both of these motorcycles. The V-Strom and KLR are relatively close in price in the used market, with an edge of about $1,000 for a similar model year going to the Kawasaki. I've always wondered, is it worth the extra grand to get the Suzuki? Both motorcycles are ridiculously reliable, relatively simple, with plenty of aftermarket parts to transform the bike into what you want them to be. Both fit rather awkwardly between what most consider to be the big adventure class and the lighter, more dirt-friendly dual sport class. The Strom fits in more with the fatties and the KLR more with the dirties. But both of them would be left in the dust by any 400 dual sport off the road and both would be left in the dust by any adventure touring leader bike on the pavement. Or at least that was my first impression. What worries me most about making this review is that both motorcycles have massive and extremely loyal fan bases that can be both extremely helpful, but sometimes overlook glaring shortcomings to defend their brand or their purchase decision. I've got to tread really lightly here, but viewers need to understand that objectivity should always trump pleasing a fan base on either side. What most don't know is that Kawasaki and Suzuki have joined forces and cross-marketed their motorcycles in the past. Have you ever heard of a KLX 400? It's just a green DRZ. Or a KLV 1000? That's Kawasaki's V-Strom. When it comes to pleasing a single side, I actually aim to please those who asked the same question I did five years ago. Which 650 is right for me? And instead of joining sides or fulfilling every marketer's dream of creating an army of loyal fanboys, please focus on the bike that most appeals to you and ride it and enjoy it. What I've found is that people who are flexible in their loyalty tend to enjoy the pros about every bike they own, but ultimately find the bike that suits them, their style, and their terrain most because they're willing to try new bikes and forget the brand loyalty. Now that in and of itself is what the KLR is really great at. 
It's the buffet of motorcycling, the all-you-can-eat sampler. You try a little of this, a little of that, and once you find out what you like best, you go back for a second helping and grab a lot more dirt or a lot more street or stick right in the middle and keep the trusty old KLR. It is the quintessential litmus test for adventure motorcycles. You want bigger, faster, lighter, more capable in the dirt? The KLR is a great choice to find exactly what you want. But is the V-Strom actually the better test? On paper, the bikes are very similar in a lot of ways. They have similar fuel capacity, gas mileage, and therefore similar range. They both require aftermarket protection like crash bars, handguards, and skid plates for serious dirt applications. The torque specs are pretty close. The KLR tops the V-Strom by about 2 inches in ground clearance, but the V-Strom is easier to sit on with 3 inches lower of seat height. With just those 3 inches, the Strom feels much lower, and even though it looks like the Fat Man atom bomb, it still feels a lot more planted, maneuverable, and to me, somehow lighter both on and off-road, even though it's about 50 pounds heavier wet. And this is where things start to get quite a bit different. The Strom pulls above 60 horses from its 645 twin, while the KLR only pulls in the 30s with its 655cc single. Alright, we're gonna pull out here, in the middle of the road, hopefully not get hit, and we're gonna do a drag race, alright? We're gonna go 3, 2, 1, go, alright? Oh, it doesn't really matter, I'll catch it. I know, I don't have a chance. <laughs> alright, ready? Yeah. I'll call it off, here we go. 3, 2, 1, go! That thing's got it buttoned up in the power department for sure. You gotta be careful, <laughs> you, you, you gotta be careful first gear though, because you let the clutch and it'll come up in one full tank. That's some serious power going on there. Man, you know what's funny? At the first of that drag race, I actually thought uh, I might have you for a little bit. No, nope, just gotta be just gotta be easy on the clutch in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, man. Well, that was it. That was a good drag race. Well fought, sir. <laughs> he tried. So. Very cool. Very cool. Power on the V-Strom is available wherever the tack is pointed. While the KLR has that amicable, albeit slow chug at lower revs, and drops off quite a bit at the higher end. In fact, when I rode the DL650, it seemed perfectly comfortable riding 15 miles an hour in fourth gear, but would get me to 80 in just a few seconds without shifting. It was actually really astonishing. Yeah, let's not run into that guy. What the heck? I was in fourth? Jeez, yeah, the power is very smooth the whole way through. The V-Strom eats highway miles for breakfast. Its seat is far more comfortable than the KLR's. Wind protection is vastly better, and it has the power to get you out of a tight spot, both to get you there faster and to slow you down quicker as well. With the lower center of gravity, it feels much tighter in the corners, and the ride is very smooth at any RPM, although I do love that KLR chuck. My KLR feels like it's maxed out near 85 miles per hour, and the ride at that speed is kind of jarring and unpleasant. While the V-Strom has a pleasant and vague feeling that you don't really know how fast you're going because you're comfortable at every speed. I was comfortable at every speed I took it to. With better cornering, I took it there as much as Matt would let me. But all this talk about the V-Strom being better on the road, that's not anything special, that's not news. A child could look at the bikes and tell you which one is better on the road. But what if I told you that the V-Strom is, in my opinion, just as good off-road? Well, I won't tell you that, because it's not. However, while the Strom is miles ahead better on the road, surprisingly that doesn't put it miles behind in the dirt. In fact, it handled vastly better than my expectations. Oh, you do definitely feel the washboard a little more. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I feel it too. <laughs> Feels a little, little more rattly, but honestly nothing uh, unmanageable. <laughs> I feel like a seven-year-old. <laughs> oh, that's right, yeah. Look, look, I am your I am your <laughs> <laughs> For a long time, I'd heard that it was an 80-20 bike, 80% 80 highway and 20% dirt, and that gave me the perception that it would be abhorrent off-road. However, with the right tires and protective farkles on both bikes, in my estimation the V-Strom could handle just about all but the gnarliest of trails that the KLR could handle. In other words, trails that are just barely doable but very difficult on the KLR may be impassable on the Strom. 
What's holding the V-Strom back? Well, the weight, the suspension travel, the ground clearance, and the design that runs the exhaust under the bike. This means that in ruts, gravel, fire road, and 90% of the trails out there that you dare take either of these bikes on, the V-Strom could handle it with the right protection over the vulnerable bits with just slightly more washboard chatter than the KLR. On rocky trails though, you'd be way better off with the higher KLR and best served on a true dual sport. The one massive difference between these two bikes on dirt is that with enough determination and skill, the KLR could probably get through just about anything you could throw it at. The V-Strom, while still durable and quite capable, just doesn't quite feel as trail worthy, therefore might meet some dead ends where more capable bikes could continue on. And while 50 pounds doesn't feel like much when the bike is upright, that extra weight on its side is often the barrier between picking up the bike to continue on the adventure and calling for help. So these nasty whoops that you see in the video, which don't look too massive on camera, but some reach the height of VW Beetles, are meant to gobble up suspension and bottom it out every time when the bike is pushed hard. When comparing these bikes, I first rode them slowly over the bumps to get a feel, then I hit them as hard as I could without overly stressing the bikes. I don't measure speed or time, but I do pay attention how the bike feels and sounds. Is the suspension bottoming out? Is the front tire washing out through the troughs? Are the bars getting squirrely? How does it handle with a little throttle off the top of the whoops? Well, it was kind of a surprise, but the low center of gravity on the V-Strom inspired a lot of confidence. Standing is just as easy and perhaps even more comfortable on the V-Strom. I never bottomed out while pushing it to a reasonable speed, and in these whoops, neither the KLR or the V-Strom would hold a candle to a well-suspended dual sport. But while the KLR was quicker and had a lot less chatter, the Strom was still smooth and quite manageable. If riding KLRs and Stroms in a group, I'm confident that any rider with a few off-road miles of experience can keep up with the KLRs on trails like this. Obviously neither of these bikes is made for high-speed whoops or jumping, but when doing these rambunctious trails, the KLR did take the edge. So in conclusion, the V-Strom is obviously a much better motorcycle on the road, while the KLR is only marginally better in the dirt. Does that make the $1,000 price difference worth the money? Dollar for dollar, I think they're both worth exactly what the market value is, so you can't go wrong with either. Again, it depends on what you want to do with your bike. For a tourer or a commuter or just a fun all-around bike, I'd heavily favor the V-Strom. For the quintessential 50-50 bike, the KLR is and always will be excellent, mirrored very closely by the Honda XR and Suzuki DR. As for a first bike litmus test, either bike will give you a good idea as to whether you'd rather have more power and comfort in a larger bike, or more dirt prowess with a better suspension in a smaller bike. However, for an extra thousand bucks, the Strom seems that it could do more on the road with only a few setbacks on the trails. So while I hear from KLR owners quite often that they're switching to a smaller or a larger bike to fit their adventure needs, Strom owners seem to stick with their original investment because it sacrifices almost nothing on the road, which is where most adventure riding takes place anyway. So knowing what I know now about the Strom and the KLR, did I make the right decision four years ago? Well, I think that for my style of riding, which favors a lot more off-road, I definitely made the right decision to get the DRZ400. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, ladies and gentle tubers. If you enjoyed the review, please hit that subscribe button for more reviews, tips, motorcycle deals, adventures, and more. Much love, guys. Happy riding. Ever ride.